QuickBooks Online 2024 Receive Payment Transaction Form. Get ready and some coffee because we get things done on schedule with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time, reports left hand side. In the favorites, right-clicking on the balance sheet, opening the link in a new tab, right-clicking the P&L profit and loss income statement, opening in a new tab. Same with the trial balance, right-click, open in a new tab. If you don't have that trial balance in the favorites, you can search for it over here. Tabbing to the right, closing up the hamburger. We're going to change that range for the first month of January 2024. Oh, one, oh, one, two, four tab to 013124 tab and let's go for a run to refresh tab into the right closing up the hamburger and changing that range in 010124 tab 013124 tab and running it so we can refresh in it tabbing it to the right and it closing up in the hamburger and then the rangings they are in changing we're going from 010124 tab 013124 and run it one more time. Let's go back to the balance sheet. Remembering, quick recap, we set up the beginning information after we created our company file. The setup stuff generally in the cog under the your company area. We set up the lists, chart of accounts, products, customers, and vendors, and the employees. We then entered transactions typical for when a business starts first needing cash so we get cash either by putting the money in ourselves the other side going to equity or taking out a loan the other side going to a liability once we have the cash we took the cash to buy the stuff that we need to invest in to make money that was the property planting equipment so that we had our guitar shop that has all the cool furniture in it and then we bought the actual guitars starting with a purchase order that we then received the guitars with and wrote a check for. So now we have guitars in our guitar shop. We finally made some sales of the guitars now. So we're actually generated some money last time or possibly not money, but we had the sales. <laughs> so we go to the profit and loss. Last time we entered some invoices here. Now note that we still haven't actually received any money even though revenue has been recorded on the profit and loss because it was done with an invoice sent to the client. So we're imagining maybe we shipped them guitar and we didn't get paid yet for it, right? So we're hoping they pay us for the guitar. And so now we're going to record the receipt of the cash on the car guitar, which would be a receive payment type form. Quick look at the flow chart just to recap the sales cycle type of thing. This is a desktop flow chart, but it's just the flow of the normal operations for basic at most accounting systems. So we bought the inventory with a purchase order, which doesn't actually record anything. And then we paid for the inventory, putting it on the books. And then we once had the inventory, we made an invoice. Note that the sales documents are either an invoice or a sales receipt. The sales receipt typically being the form used if you're in the store, for example, in a cash register type of situation, you can imagine the sales receipt. We started with the invoice, which is an accrual form because it increases the accounts receivable, this being typical to a job cost system 
often found in like a landscaping or in company or in a, a bookkeeping company, CPA firm, law firm, and so on, where we do the work first, or in this case, we're imagining we gave the inventory and we're going to collect the uh, money on it. So the next step is then the receiving of the payment. So obviously the payment could be received in multiple different forms. It used to be most common that you get a check in the mail, right? But maybe that's not as common these days. You might get some type of electronic payment, in which case you would receive it to the bank account and you might put it into or see it come through, say, the bank feeds. That would be quite common if, for example, you had the QuickBooks checking account and when you sent them the invoice, you gave them multiple payment options that could make that receiving of the payment a little bit easier. We have a whole other course or section on that if you want to check that out. But even if you don't have the QuickBooks checking account, you could still possibly receive the payments with an electronic transfer, which would still come through the bank feeds uh, into your checking account and you would see it uh, that way. You might get a cash payment. They could come into the store and actually give you cash. They might pay you with a credit card, which again, you could imagine how you're gonna set up basically uh, the receipt of the credit card, what kind of tool you're gonna be using to be processing the receipt of the credit card. The thing we wanna point out here, however, is that when you receive the payment, you have an option. You can either put it directly into your checking account at this point in time with the received payment form, or put it into a clearing account called undeposited funds or funds to be deposited, something like that. So you might say, well, why, why would I want to put it into a clearing account? What even is a clearing account? Well, notice if, if you got a payment that was a check, for example, then you know that the check is going to hit your bank account in the same dollar amount that the check is given for. So in that case, you might just put it directly into the checking account and you can then match the checking account to what happens on the bank side of the things because it's going to be the same dollar amount. So that would work fine. Sometimes when you have electronic transfers that go directly into your account, similar situation, it's going to hit your account possibly for the exact same amount that uh, you would see hitting the bank account. So you can easily process that one and you might put it directly into the checking account. But you might have a situation where you have a credit card company, for example, that's intermediary transaction, another financial institution that one might charge you for the services and two, they might group together multiple transactions that you have received and then give you the money in a lump sum. Therefore, it will hit your bank account in a different total than if you were to have uh, one receive payment. That's a problem because if you record the transaction as each individual transaction and the credit card company is combining transactions together, then you're not going to be able to easily reconcile often done with the help of the bank feeds these days. You won't be able to match up to the bank feeds because the bank feed will have multiple transactions that we entered that we need to add together to tie out to what, what is actually hit the bank. You can imagine it, it might be easier to imagine with cash, right? If you got cash payments, and people come into the store and gave you actual cash, then when you deposit the cash into the bank account, you're not gonna do so each payment at a time. That would be tedious. You're just gonna take all the cash you have and deposit it and one lump sum into the checking account. That means that the checking account is gonna have multiple sales transactions hit the bank with one lump sum. You won't be able to reconcile what hit the bank to the books very easily if you record the receive payments, then one payment at a time, you'll have to add the payments together in order to reconcile. So that's the issue. So we're going to use the clearing account. How can you fix that? You use a clearing account, you put this information into a clearing account, and then you transfer it from the clearing account into the checking account in the same grouping and format that's actually going to hit the bank so that you can do the bank reconciliation as easy as possible. In other words, if you go to your bank reconciliation and you try to reconcile what you entered on your side to the bank, possibly with the help and use of bank feeds, and you have to add things together in order to match what's on the bank side, then your system is probably not as efficient as it could be. And the way to fix it would be to possibly create a clearing account. 
Now, if you're working with a credit card or some intermediate institution, then you're going to have to figure out how it is that they're grouping things and possibly charging you fees so you can properly use the clearing account to group your payments together. All right, let's close this out. Let's get an idea of what I'm talking about. If I go to this first tab from a practical standpoint, and if I go down to my uh, sales areas, which I would call the customer center, and I close up the hand boogie, we can see that we have the invoices that are outstanding. So we're tracking the invoices. These are our outstanding invoices thus far that we're gonna imagine we receive payments on. We can also find them by going to the customer tab and I can filter here. I can filter by the open invoices, for example. So these are the people that owe us money from uh, the open invoices. And I'm gonna first look at Anderson. So if I go into Anderson Guitars, then we could see that we have two open invoices for Anderson Guitars. I could just select the receive payment and it'll automatically open up the receive payment and put the and link it to uh, the proper invoice. Now, I just also want to mention with regards to the bank feeds, if the customer pays you with an electronic transfer, you can imagine a system where you try to wait till it clears the bank feeds and then connect it to the invoice, although that's probably not the way you would typically do it, right? I mean, I can imagine they're gonna give me an electronic transfer, and then if I went into my bank feeds over here, which would be under the transactions, and if I had my, my bank transactions connected, they would be in this first tab. And then as I see the bank feed uh, come through, I could try to match it basically to an invoice. So you can imagine, a system like that but usually what would happen is you're going to receive the payment record it first on your end back to the sales tab and then match it out with the bank feeds so the bank feeds wouldn't actually be recording anything it would just be helping you reconcile what's on your books to the banks which is something you really want to do because that gives you the that big internal control over your checking account as well as everything that everything else as well so let's go back to the open invoices. Let's go back into Anderson. I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna hit the plus button up top and we entered an invoice. Let's do the next one down, receiving the payment, the next step in the process of the full accrual accounting system on the, account, on the, on the revenue side at least. Let's type in Anderson. So there's our customer Anderson. If I do it this way, then uh, I'm gonna see the two invoices down below that are currently outstanding. So I'll tap through this. Let's put a date up top and the date is going to be, let's say the 16, uh, let's put 16 on the date and then I'll tab through again. Now the payment method, you can add payment methods if you want, if it was an electronic transfer or something like that, then you can add an electronic transfer or, or, or you know, whatever other payment methods you might have if it's going to your PayPal account or something. Uh, and, and you might put a note on your on your invoice to pay you in some tran in some electronic transfer way that you might put uh, in here. But it would be cash, check, or credit are like the are like the standard payment methods. If I I'm going to say this time I'll just say cash because I want to imagine it. Why we would use the clearing account? If it's cash, you might not have any reference number. If it was a check, then you might put the check number in here and then the deposit account. Now, if it was going directly into my bank account, I could just use the checking account. I would use that if I got, say, like, like a, a check or an electronic transfer that's gonna go directly into my checking account. If it's a credit card or if it's cash, then you might wanna use the payments, uh, payments to deposit, meaning this is a clearing account that we're going to use to group the payments together to put in the checking account in one lump sum. That's what we will practice doing here. And then I'm going to select the invoice that we want down below, which is going to be the 5,000. Notice the payment populates automatically for the full balance when I click it off. But if you want something other than that, if you want to make it something lower than the 5,000 that you're going to pay at this point, you could make it lower and there'll still be an outstanding balance on that particular invoice. If they paid off both of these, then we can check them both off. If I was to click on this invoice, it would link us to that actual invoice, of course, which is nice because all this whole thing is tying together 
uh, nicely. Note also that this receive payment is usually an internal document, meaning we don't often, you don't need to basically give it to the client oftentimes, but rather it's a form that's used for internal recording, which is going to record the transaction of us receiving the payment. What does that transaction look like? The receive payment form, the first account you want to think of is generally accounts receivable going down. This is the second step to the invoice. Accounts receivable is going down. Where's the other side going to go? Into some kind of cash account, possibly into the checking account. But instead, we're going to put it into this clearing account, payments to deposit, which used to be called undeposited funds. Same concept. All right, so we have the cancel, clear, print, save and close save and send if you wanted to send it uh, you can uh, uh, and then we have these or save and close i'm going to say save and close let's check it out let's go to the balance sheet let's run it and then it didn't go into the checking account instead it went into this clearing account payment to deposit boom we'll go into that there's the transaction detail there's the payment form notice it shows up here as payment on the transaction type form and if I go into here, it says receive payment. So they have a, a little bit weird or different terminology depending on what you're looking at, but it's useful to know that term, what it means. It's the receive payment form or the payment form or the second form that you're gonna use to receive the payment on the invoice. Going back on over, we can then see the other side uh, is going to the uh, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable should be should be always doing the same thing it goes up with invoices it goes down with the receive payment forms if i bring this back to 2023 you could kind of tie this out there's the 5000 here there's the invoice see they should kind of match out that's all you really see in the accounts receivable going back out we're going to exit this one the receivable will also have a sub ledger that will be tying out by customer let's open that up just to see that go into the right right click on the tab out here duplicate it so we can open another report and we'll go to the reports on the left close up the boogie scrolling down we're looking at who owes you and i want just the classic uh customer balance detail just a straight sub ledger and let's make it there's, that date's fine so there's anderson there's uh jo so anderson only has the one outstanding item at this point in time because the other one was paid off the total is at the 23 7 21 50 that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet 23 7 21 50 if we go into the internal documentation now and we can look at this multiple ways if i look at let's we could look at you know all sales transactions and then filter by say the invoices and then maybe on the invoices we want status and just the open invoices here's the open invoices if i look at the closed uh in here's the invoices and i look at the open uh the paid invoices there's the paid invoice we're probably going to do that more likely on the invoices tab over here so we have these automatic kind of filters up top but i can go down here to all invoices and then unpaid invoices and then the paid invoices so there's the one that we paid and we can look at it by customer and we can go in by customer and say these are the open invoices with this little filter and we can also look at the ones that were recently paid so here's the anderson that was recently paid if i go into anderson look at these forms and we look at this invoice so I could say this one's the one that's paid gives you a nice little indication that it has been paid here. That's great. If I go into it, it gives you the, the history of it and there it has been paid. It has not yet been deposited. So that's going to be the next step. And then I can also basically, if I wanted to edit, if I go into the edit, I could see the actual form, which has the little indication that it has been paid there. So that's nice. I'm going to close this back out. And so then if I go to the payment form, payment form says it's closed. If I go into it, it gives us the detail on the right. And then you can view or edit it 
going into the view or edit and there is the form there's the invoice so you can see everything is basically linked together and that's the point of using the forms you got to use the forms to track the accounts receivable because you want this to be the case you want the payments to be tying out to the invoice so that quickbooks knows that the payment that payment should be tied to the invoice if that wasn't the case what could happen you would end up with payments that aren't that would end up with credits that are outstanding that need to be tied to something because quickbooks if quickbooks couldn't see that it matches out to the particular invoice so this is the typical pattern that we would expect to see in the customers invoices happening and then payments made for them if we're doing something on an accrual basis where we invoice the clients otherwise we would have the sales forms if it was a cash-based system of simply the sales receipts which would be like sales at a register for example now i also just want to point out if i go into this balance sheet account this amount to be deposited when we actually deposit that we'll deposit it with a deposit form which might include multiple payments so if i go back on over here when we make the deposit we noted that you could do that with a deposit form we saw that it might go through the check register and you might use a check register to help you with the deposits or you might enter it directly into the register and i i would like to point out that normally I'll use something else like the register or the bank feeds oftentimes to make deposits if they're not part of the normal accounting cycle, meaning if they're not tied to the receive payment and the sales receipts. But if the deposit you're making is part of the normal customer cycle tied to the receive payment and the sales receipt, then you're generally gonna wanna use the standard deposit form because when you go into it now, you'll note we have another tab up top. So it's gonna go into the checking account but now up top, it says select the payments included in this deposit. So this payment here is coming in from the payment screen. And it gives you, if there were multiple payments, I can check m multiple payments off. And therefore the total would show up in the checking account for multiple payments. So this is a great tool to kind of match up the deposits that we're receiving uh, to put them into the bank account. Whereas if I was just depositing something directly into the bank from like a loan, or from our investment as the owner, you remember that we just entered an account, such as the loan payable account that we did before in a prior presentation or the, or, or the equity account for an investment. So those are gonna be, so that's that. Let's take a look. Let's do another one here. I'm gonna say, do you wanna leave? Yes, I would like to leave without saving it. And then if I take a look at the next one, we can go into the invoices. We can look at the outstanding uh, invoices at this point in time uh, we could say not paid we want to say unpaid and we've got the Jones uh, guitars that's the next one let's look at it by customer and then I'm gonna do the same thing here for inventory for invoices let's go into Jones guitars here and then I'm gonna look at this one this is the one that we want this time instead of hitting the plus button and making the receive payment form Let's just go into the receive payment from here, which is probably what most people would, would tend to do. That populates the customer automatically for us. Uh, and then uh, we have find by, we could find by the invoice number, uh, accept payments online. Again, if you, if you do that, QuickBooks is probably gonna lead you again to other forms of payment collection, which might mean you know trying to sign up to the, your checking account and whatnot. So then we're going to say 18. Let's make it on the 18th. Is it 18th? Is that what I want? Yeah, let's do that. And then let's say, make it cash again, because I want to imagine that we get multiple cash payments that we're going to deposit uh, together to get an idea of why we would use this account, the payments to deposit the clearing account, as opposed to uh, the checking account, which you might also do in a similar fashion if you had credit card payments or some other processor intermediary financial institution that's going to be grouping your payments together before they hit your checking account or possibly charging you fees of some kind that you're going to have to deal with so then we've got the invoice down here it's selected already the full payment is going to be made it's a received payment form what's that mean what's it going to do the first account that you want to come to mind is accounts receivable 
This is the thing that's connected to the invoice. The invoice means increase to the accounts receivable. Receive payment means decrease to the accounts receivable. The other side's going to go into some kind of cash account, but possibly not the checking account. Instead, go into the clearing account of payments to deposit. Let's go ahead and save and close that one. Go to the balance sheet. And I'm going to say run it. So now we have it not in the checking account, but down here in the payments to deposit. By the way, you might be saying, why is the payment to deposit account down here when you're holding on to cash? We're imagining this is physically cash in our case because we said we got cash from it. So you would think that it would be part of the accounts up here from a normal reporting purpose for a balance sheet because usually this account is not called checking accounts for normal external reporting, we would call it cash and cash equivalents, which in would include the cash that we have in a cash register or something, although that would be a lot to cash to have cash register. But, but it's not doing that because for QuickBooks' standpoint, this is a checking account that has its own special needs. It has its own separate account type because it could be connected to the bank feeds and so on. Whereas this, although it's still cash, acts like an other current asset account. There's, it doesn't connect to the bank or anything like that. So they dump it down here. So it's kind of weird like that from an external reporting standpoint. However, this account should not have much in it at any given time because you're just using it as a clearing account. As soon as you get that money in there, by the end of the day, we're going to deposit it into the checking account. We're going to walk to the bank. We shouldn't be holding on to that cash uh, you know, in our cash, especially with all the criminals around here stealing stuff, right? We should be taking it out of here and put it uh, into the bank. That's the safer thing to do. And it, when that happens, this account will go back down to zero, of course. Let's go into the payment deposit here and check it out. And so, so now you've got th uh, this one. So now these two are making up the total amount here. If I, if I go back on over, the accounts receivable is the other side. If I go into the AR, R, the pirate account, now we can see the increases and the decreases. Let's bring it back to 2023. And just so we can see how it kind of matches out. So the 5,000, the 5,000, the 75, the 75, that's the pattern we'd expect to see. Let's go back on over and look at the sub ledger exit without saving for the accounts receivable. This is the accounts receivable by customer. Run it. So now you can see Jones only has one invoice outstanding. The total is at 1622150. That should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. 1622150. If we look at this from an internal perspective on the first tab, we can see in the all forms, we can sort here by by the invoices. And we can see, we can see the uh, invoices to, to this way, all invoices or the open invoices or uh, uh, the, the paid invoices. We can look at the invoices here, do a similar thing. Here are the unpaid invoices. Here are the paid invoices. We can look at the customers and we can look at the, uh, un the overdue invoice open invoices here and then these are the recently paid invoices and we recently paid the invoice or the or the one that was recently paid for jones uh guitars let's go into that one and so now we've got uh the recent activity and here is the invoice it's marked off as paid if you click on it, it gives you the detail on the right. It has not yet been deposited. It's in undeposited funds at this point in time. In other words, you can edit it to go into the actual invoice. You can see that it's been paid. We can close that out and we can see that the payment has been closed out as well. Why is it important to say the payment's closed out? You would think, of course, it's closed out because you paid the invoice. But it's possible that they gave you a payment before you build them, like a prepayment, a customer deposit, which means you would end up with a credit or a payment that needs to be applied to a future invoice. This is showing you that that's not the case. It's been paid. If you go into it, it has the detail on uh, the right. And then if I was to edit or view that one, then we can see the activity and the invoice that it was linked to. So it should be everything should be tied out on these internal forms, you can void it or you can delete it if you need to. All right, let's do one more. So I'm gonna go back and say, okay, let's go back to our customers 
and I'm going to say open invoices. And let's do one for Smith. This is the other one that these are all the ones that we had in place from like our starting point, like from the prior accounting system. These are the invoices that were put in place on our beginning balances that we're taking care of at this point in time in case. Uh, so we didn't actually make these invoices in the current month. We imagine they were made in the prior accounting system and now we're basically paying them off and they were put into our system as an invoice to support the accounts receivable balance, which is great because then we can pursue and collect payments on it just like we normally would if we entered the invoice in the current you know, system. So it's out, this, is an, this is our invoice and I can say, okay, it's the same thing. We can say receive payment. So I'm gonna say receive payment for that invoice from Smith Guitars, boom, tab, tab, 18. We'll keep it the same payment. We're gonna say cash. We're gonna say it's gonna go into the clearing account, payments to deposit, and then it's checked off down here. What is this form gonna do? It's a receive payment form. First thing that comes to mind, accounts receivable decreases. Other side goes into cash, possibly the checking account, but not this time. It's gonna go into the clearing account, payments to deposit, which we will then deposit into the checking account in the same grouping as will appear on the checking account. So let's go in uh, on the bank side, that is. Let's save and close it go to the balance sheet and check it out, run it again. And we're going to go down and say that the AR, let's look at the AR first this time, the R account. And we can see that if I bring it back to 2023, we can see these three payments. There's the five checked off. There's the seven. It's an invoice. Seven, five checked off seven, five with a payment. There's the 8,000. It's an invoice checked off. It was paid with a payment. That's the pattern we expect to see. That's all we expect to see in the accounts receivable, basically. Let's exit out of there. You can also imagine that pattern, same pattern happening when you look at a subledger account by a uh, customer. If I look at a, my subledger over here uh, and update this one, now Smith is gone because 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 he doesn't have an open invoice or she or whoever Smith is. And so the total is now at 822150. Let's go back to the balance sheet just to note that there's the 822150. By the way, if I go back to this balance over here and you want to look at the detail, another report that shows the increases and decreases are in the reports on the left, closing up the hamburger, who owes you. We can look at the invoices and receive payments and that that gives you at least some detail about the activity. So if I look at this for the month 010124 to 013124. So now you had, this is what has happened. We have the payment and then, or the invoice and then the payment, right? The invoice and the payment. So invoice payment. So that's the activity that we would expect to see on, an, on a customer by customer basis as well. So this is a nice report, although it doesn't give you the the totals here it just gives you the you know the activity but you can see both sides of the transaction now if we want to see both sides of the transaction for one particular customer then we will typically do that internally go into the left hand side going into our customers and we could look at the sales transactions now and we could say all right these are the ones that have been paid versus the open invoices now we just have those two that we made in the current period Here's the invoices tab. We can look at it this way as well. So these are the ones that have been paid. These are the unpaid ones, the two ones we made in a prior recent presentation. And then in the customer tab, we can look at the open invoices. So we only have these two customers that have open invoices now. The recently paid items includes Smith Guitars. If I go into Smith Guitars, we can see that we have the invoice. If I click on it, it gives us our tracking trail. Hasn't been deposited yet. Closing that out. And we can see that I can edit it and check it out this way. So I can see that it's been paid in full. Closing that out. I can look at the payment. It's closed out as well. I can see the trail of it if I click on it. And if I click and edit it, I can see the actual payment linking out to the invoice. Closing this back out, back to the balance sheet. The other side of the transaction went into the clearing account of the payments to deposit, 20,500. So if this was cash, this would be a whole lot of cash, right? That we're holding on, on, on 
hands here. So we, we probably want to deposit that pretty quickly. Uh, so we're going to, so there's the 20,500. If I go back on over now, note the next step would be that we're going to deposit it into the bank. I don't want to deposit it as three different deposits because when I reconcile it to the bank, the bank's going to show it as one lump sum deposit. Again, I think it's easiest to see that when you think about taking your cash sales, going to the bank and depositing it as one lump sum. But the same concept applies with any intermediary financial institution like a credit card company or something that's going to group your payments together before it hits your checking account, in which case you need to do something to line up to the credit card. You have to talk to the credit card company and say, what, what is your process so that I can mirror that on my side so I can properly enter the information into the checking account so that I can properly reconcile possibly with the help and the use of the bank feeds. Because if the bank feeds show 20,500 deposit, but we put in our system, these three deposits, 5,000, 7, 5, and 8,000, then when, when I match up to the bank feeds, I'm gonna have to match three separate payments to the one bank feed. You could do that, that's possible to do, but it's messy uh, and and so what you want to do is get a system where you don't have to do that the reconciliation the bank feed process and matching to the bank feeds should be easy if it's not if you find yourself doing that then it's likely that you can have a better system that will give you less headaches by finding using the clearing account and figuring out how you can group your payments in the same format as whatever's causing you the problem, the credit card company, other financial institution, or cash payments so you can fix it when you make the deposit, not when you do the bank reconciliation, possibly at the time that you're matching to the bank feeds. Okay, so if I go to the tab to the left, select the drop down, just so you can see, we will not record the deposit, but just note if I look at the deposit form, now you have these automatic things that are in here. This is telling you, hey, these things came in from the payment forms. And or if you had if you had sales receipts, they would also be here. And these are things that are in undeposited funds. There's the 20,500. You need to match these out to the same format that you're going to use to put them into uh, the checking account. And so we'll take a look at that in future presentations. So let's close this out. I'm not going to save it. And let's check out our trial balance to see where we stand at this point in time. Let's make sure we run it to refresh it. This is where we stand. We're standing on our two legs. We're standing on our own two legs, the debit leg and the credit leg. And then you can see if, if your two legs are as, as muscular as my two legs over here, or at least have the same shapeliness uh, on your side. And if so, if your numbers line up to these numbers, then great. If they don't, then you might try to increase the date and see if it changes because it's often a date issue. And if it does change, drill down on the number that changed, go to the source document, and you can generally change the date, which is a great thing to do in a practice problem. But you got to be careful, of course, doing that kind of thing in practice. Uh, but you can do that. And then if things still don't line up by the end of the first month of data input, we will run transaction reports, which possibly could help to tie this out as well. But just remember, this is the balance sheet on top of the income statement, checking account, asset account, accounts receivable, asset account, inventory, asset account, investment, asset account, payments to deposit, asset account. We've got the accumulated depreciation, contra asset account, still an asset, but it brings down the total asset balance, furniture and equipment, asset account, accounts payable. This is where the liabilities start. You can see all the credits lining up. You got that credit, but that's an outlier. That's a contra asset. These, they're all the credit side. This is what the company owns. This is who has claim to it. We've got liability people having claim to those assets, accounts payable, the vendors, the credit card company, the government with the tax, sales tax, sales tax, loan payable the bank has has claim to those assets and then we have claim to the asset as the owner in the form of the owner investment account the owner's equity account and the current income why does it have a debit over here because this could be crunched together as all part of equity meaning the income statement is the 7830 minus the 6264 which is all part of equity retained earnings or owner's equity